Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video from Inside Wire. This is part three of the mini series on the UI access. In part one, you saw me unbox the product and discuss some of the items you might need. Then in part two, you saw me install all of the items. If you missed this, either part one or part two, links are popping up on the screen now as I speak. For now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna log into the UI software and see how we configure the UniFi access. Let's look through the capabilities of what is good and what the limitations are. Before we start, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. If there's something specific you'd like to see, please drop me a comment in the section below and I'll see what I can do. Let's get started. After logging into the UDM Pro, uh, I haven't done anything yet. This is literally just what's popped up. It's already said that they've detected an access hub an Access Reader Lite and a Pro on your UDM Pro. So do you want to add these devices now? I'm actually going to click the X on here because I want to see how that works and we'll click Remind Me later because I've added a camera. So actually quickly first what I'm going to do is just check for the latest. Uh, it looks like there's an update. So I'm actually going to do a quick update here before we get started just to make sure we have the latest firmware. Okay. That's fine, we're now at the latest. So let's click on access. So it says, thanks for, uh, thanks for using Unify Access, Ubiquiti's enterprise security solution. This process is gonna take us through the setup. So let's click, I agree to the policy and end user license agreement. Click start. And it pops up straight away with what you have. So just for, uh, let's just call this studio. And this is on the first floor. And then we have this as enter and this is exit. It's good it has the locate buttons on there. So I'm just gonna quickly show you what happens when you click locate. You can see that uh, the flashing on the front. So the UA Pro, uh, the UA Reader Pro actually beeps. And uh, let's see what the uh, UA Reader Lite does. So the UA Reader Lite actually beeps. So let's bring these all in. So it gives you the enter to exit option just there again. So let's bring these in, let's click next. So there's register admin access card. So I'm actually just gonna tap this on the Reader Pro. It gives you the option here, whether you wanna do the Reader Pro or the Reader Lite. So we'll just do the Pro for now. And there's a beep that, ha uh, so you hold the card on the reader for about two to three seconds and then it beeps. So you can register at cards here for more people, but we'll do that after. So let's click next. Um, set up access schedule. So you can change this now, but for the time being, I'm just gonna leave it 24 hours a day or seven days. Click next. It says verify your configuration and click finish. So it's preparing that now. Okay, so there we have it. So we're this is our access portal. Um, there seems to be a little problem. Uh, reasons to be upgraded, so it's giving 97% because the devices that we have need to be upgraded, but let's quickly run through the menus itself. So this seems to show a time lapse of people zapping in and out. There's no one that's gone in and out yet, so you can show daily, weekly, monthly, or three quarterly. The elements, so this shows exactly what's set up and what's not working, and you can see right here that um, the firmware updates need to be done on these devices. So we'll do that in a minute. These are all the users you have set up. So any users and what NFC cards that they're linked to. Uh, policy names, schedules and holiday groups. We'll have a look into all of this shortly. Any visitors, you can add a visitor just here and this shows the access log. So I guess this is some sort of reporting side of it to show you uh, what's gone, who's gone in and out, what events and any captures. Uh, it shows quickly here, so for the capture, you need the UA Pro. 
So if you have a UA light, you won't get any capture events because it doesn't have a camera on it. If we go into the settings, we'll have a quick look here. It shows the version, preferences. Yeah, so capture shows the UA Pro is required. Uh, if I turn that off, I don't think it, yeah, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, it tells you the duration you want to capture for, five seconds all the way up to 10, uh, two seconds all the way up to 10 seconds. If you want all your door access stuff on a different uh, VLAN, you can set your VLAN just here. And if you want advanced security, this only allows UA cards only to be used. So you can turn this on if you wanted to, but we'll keep that off for now. Backups and recovery, as I already said, there's, uh, you can back this up just here and download it. Backups and recoveries, as I've probably said multiple times in my videos before, the back, make sure you have a backup for everything that you have set up just in case you need to restore it. And lo and behold, underneath it, we have the restore side of it. So you can restore all the roles and features that you had set up and all your reports configuration set up. Now the firmware has updated on all the devices. I have to say that did take uh, a decent amount of time, um, probably a good 10, 10 minutes or so to get that done. So. We can see now at the top here, it says everything is great. So it's perfect because our firmware is now up to date. So going through bit by bit, so we can look at the elements, um, which is what we've got set up here, the IP addresses, the firmware version topology. Um, it shows you what it's plugged in from. And obviously the more you have, the more it links in. Interestingly, we have the camera plugged into this, but I'm guessing that shows up in the protect side of things. And if you want to group the doors, so if you want first floor, first floor, ground floor, however you want to separate them really by departments, it's entirely up to you. So we look at users. So let's see what happens when we try and add a user. Uh, you can add a batch of users or import from a CSV, which is good. That gives you good flexibility. So we will just add a user here. We'll call this test user one for my lack of better imagination. It's a user which group. And if we want to add a card, we haven't added a card yet. So we can add a user without giving them a card. So now we'll go on to add a card. So we click add. Um, we will do this on the light one this time. hold the card up against the reader and it obviously beeps there for you so we have we can give it a new user we want to give it an existing user we're test user one and click assign card so now we have two users so we have myself and we have a test user one then we move on to policies so let's just have a look at what the policies are so if we just edit this one this is all access, all doors, all the time. And this one I believe is the same. It's probably default admin policy, which is my card. Um, so let's add a policy. So let's call this uh, demo policy one. We'll click next. So we search for the doors. So we're just gonna say, you can assign it to the all doors, but we're gonna wanna assign it to the studio door. And we're gonna assign the user, we're gonna put test user one. Click next. We're gonna keep this as the always access policy for now. Um, and that's the demo policy. So let's go to schedules quickly. Let's create a new schedule. Uh, demo schedule one. Um, and what I want this person to do is only have access between 10 and 11 on a Monday. I want to delete that, delete that. Oh, delete that. That's not going right, is it? Delete, delete, delete. We click save. And then we go back to our policies and I'm going to change this one and edit demo policy one, so they can only access between 10 and 11.
Uh, let's have a quick look at what holiday groups do. Um, add holiday group. So you can add in various calendars of when the holidays are. I'm in the UK and it doesn't look like the U. So let's just see what it does yet. So it has the Singapore calendar, the US calendar, uh, Chinese calendar or Taiwan and here's China's calendar and then there's custom. So you can add all the holidays in there. So for, for the UK, for you UK users, you'll have to add in all your holidays. There is no set group. Um, so we can see now that we have user demo one, which only has access between 10 and 11, and the other user doesn't have access. And the other users have access all the time. So I'm going to quickly show you a quick demo of the door of that card working. Welcome, test. So then let's move on to visitors. So let's have a quick look at what this does. So we can click add visitor, add visitor. So we can just say visitor, visitor one. Let's just change this to visitor one. Um, which doors you want them to have access to. Uh, you want to add a card in here for them to, to give to them and the reason they're here. So they're here for another reason. And there's more information like email, phone number, company, person they're here to visit, etc. etc. So if they're here to visit me, click save. And this all gets logged in the reports, I'm assuming. Um, it's a one-time visit uh, between today, uh, so we'll give it till the end of today for this card, and we add the user. And then all visitors, and then you can see the visitor log too. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to scan one more card for this visitor, um, just to show you the logs that pop up. So we go and... So we edit this one, uh, we select add a card, and we're going to select the reader light and that's how you assign a card to visitor one and we click save so what i'm going to do um, so you can mark as complete or mark as arrived that's quite quite a good option um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly tap my visitor card And if we go to the logs, you can see here, I've tapped the card a couple of times. Okay, so that's visitors. So if we have a look at the access logs now, you can see, I'm just gonna tap another card on here. And then the other card. Just so we can get some, just so we can get some activities on here. So let's uh, refresh that page. You can see here that we've had a couple of entries and exits, or a couple of exits uh, by the same door. The activities, what the individual activities are, unlock door, add visitor, so it's quite a breakdown on here. Um, events, so I just scanned the front door um, and you can see here that it's captured. Uh, something is, yeah, is literally up against my wall at the moment, So, but it's captured that I've tapped in the device and there's a video. One other thing you can do on here is you can export the access logs to a CSV. So you can say, I want to have a look at this. Just open that up and we'll have a quick look at what is involved in that. And if I open that CSV file now, you can see here that you have entry, exit, the access, or I'm guessing if it's declined, it will show you as a not successful. If we, go if we go back to the top of the dashboard here, you can see now it's starting to populate um, the users. You can see what the average clock-in time is or the average time people go into that place. Uh, total number of registered users and you can see here how many people have entered and how many people have exited. Down here it shows you a quick capture, so if you want to have a quick look at who's gone in, you can just click on this, I'm assuming. 
No, it doesn't, so I think you just gotta click view more, and then it takes you to the capture itself, so then you can go off and have a look and see what's happening. So just going back to users again, you can see we have the users just here, um, just showing you the pop out, the name, uh, the group, the NFC card, activities, you can show the breakdown of the activities by the user so you can see what they've done, where and how. Um, and it actually says down here, you can only edit part of the user information here. If you want to edit full, you need to go to the Unified Portal. So we'll go off to the Unified Portal, we'll click there and see what happens here. So this actually takes you back to Unify users, it takes you to the users and it gives you all the users and admins and groups that you've created previously. And that's all there really seems to be with the Unify Access system. One thing I did forget to show you was on the actual units themselves. So you can have a look at the configuration policy. Uh, you can see down here an overview of all of them. You can see the configuration, whether you want to change it from enter to exit if you wanted to. Policies. Uh, you can keep it as a schedule unlock, so if you want it unlocked all the time for a certain time of day, uh, for example, it's an entrance, uh, entrance door during working hours, you want to keep it open, shows the activity and manage on there. One thing in the reader light is you can actually use a hand wave to open the door. So whereas I've installed a push to exit button, you actually don't need one. Um, you can use the reader light to do that for you. Um, I'll give you a quick demo on that. So this is a card that we had set up and configured to expire after, well, the schedule not to work after a certain amount of time. So I'm gonna try and scan it now and see what happens. Outside of set schedule. So there you go, it doesn't actually allow you access in Outside of set schedule. I was not aware that the reader light can be used as an exit feature that you can wave in front of. This is quite cool. In terms of cost comparison though, you're looking at $99 US for the reader light versus $10 to $15 for a push button, or in some cases maybe even cheaper. But nonetheless, it's a good feature to have and good flexibility for future. Once again, be sure to subscribe to my channel and be notified and join me for part four where I talk about some of the wishlist items where I think Ubiquity could take this to the next level. I hope you found this informative. I've dropped all the links in the description below for all the products in this video, plus some other ones. And if you have enjoyed this video, once again, please do hit that like button. This is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.